Hello, um, I'm Alison Baum. I'm the founder and CEO of the national charity Best Beginnings. Uh, welcome to this session of the Digital Leaders Conference 2021. I'm going to be talking to you about our NHS approved Baby Buddy app, which is a pregnancy and um, early years app, and how our approach can lead to lessons learned well beyond the early years space and the maternity space. Um, we are passionate about the power of working from the evidence, working collaboratively and working innovatively to drive change. And whether you're watching this as someone in the early years of maternity space or a commissioner doing, who knows, digital work around end of life or with a specific health condition or social care consideration, I do hope that there'll be lots that you will glean from this because I believe that there are some cross-cutting themes around how embracing co-creation and evidence and this willingness to learn and iterate based on data can really help us all unleash the transformative potential of digital. Um, in my talk, I'm going to be covering four main things. Uh, each section is of a different length, so don't clock watch. I'll get you up there uh, in 45 minutes or thereabouts um, uh, in time to the end. Um, initially, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the charity, Best Beginnings, uh, really focusing on our theoretical underpinning and approach. Uh, then I'm going to dive in to tell you about our NHS approved Baby Buddy app, how we created it and how, informed by lots of data and through this iterative process, we are um, shifting it and about to launch a new and a step change version coming out this summer. Then I'm going to dive in and tell you about some really exciting work that we're doing across Surrey Heartland's integrated care system. That, they're a trailblazer site for Baby Buddy 2.0. And this bit kind of really will help home in on the fact that digital is incredibly powerful and there are no magic ones out there. The power of digital is unleashed, not only in the co-creation that underpins the development of the intervention, but also in thinking about how it is used, how it is deployed and the importance of co-creation in that latter piece, what we call at Best Beginnings embedding. Um, and then at the very end, I will give you all the opportunity to get involved. And that's whether you want to test drive the app or, uh, or meet with me or anyone from, from the team to understand more about how this uh, clinically assured intervention, Baby Buddy 2.0, can be used to augment and amplify important work that you're doing and how we've managed to create an intervention that's both national, but then bespokeable at a local or regional level. So first to Baby Buddy. Uh, we work as a charity to give every child the best start. And, and since I um, founded the charity back in 2006, we've been committed to informing and empowering parents directly and the professionals that support them, support the relationship between parents and professionals um, with this clear focus on both improving outcomes and reducing inequalities. All our work focuses on um, the early years from preconception. Officially, our charitable objectives are to the fifth birthday. And as I'll mention during my talk, we are on the way to get to the fifth birthday. But to be honest, these, these first 15 years of the organization, we've got through pregnancy to the first birthday. It's where the, they say early intervention is good and earlier is better. Also, what we've been doing on this iterative learning cycle is we've gone beyond proof of concept to evidence of impact and now we're ready to scale. Um, 10 years after the charity was well established, uh, WHO and UNICEF shared launched this nurturing care framework and it's been so helpful to us as a charity to explain to people who may not live and breathe the early years space the fact that there are these many different components of nurturing care. If we want children to not just survive, but to thrive, we need to support caregivers, parents uh, um, of all backgrounds, um, the knowledge and confidence to really deliver all components of nurturing care to their child. And I'll come back to this a little bit later. In the UK right now, 2021, there are shocking inequalities and in outcomes, and we are committed to shifting this 
not alone, but in collaboration with many other organisations and charities um, and system partners that I'll share with you. I do just want to spend a moment just drawing out one of these many shocking facts. It is just unacceptable that in 2021, a black British woman is four times more likely to die in pregnancy than a white British woman. And we at Best Beginnings are proud to be involved in the Maternity Transformation Programme, to have been involved in a Better Births, to be working with Professor Jacqueline Dunkley Vent, the Chief Midwifery Officer and others, to, to, to drive this change so that whatever your background, you should have an equal chance of a good outcome for you and for your baby. Um, I've already talked about these principles of evidence, innovation and collaboration. Um, and I just wanted to give you a flavour of the extent to which we operate with, collaborate with, work with people in many different settings. I mean, from the grassroots, I almost want to switch it on its head, but the traditional ways from the grassroots to the policy makers, supporting information flow, supporting ideas and supporting collaboration across this space. Uh, just for a moment to give you an idea from the policymakers' perspective, as a charity, we're really proud to have um, organised two roundtables um, for Andrea Ledsom MP and her team uh, that supported learning that shaped the early years review. We're now working very closely with the team also to support the implementation of the early years review. And parents have been involved always, right from the beginning. Um, our first resource back in a launch in 2008 had huge numbers of parents and professionals that helped shape it. Uh, not in one go, but at different points on the development of the resource. Uh, and ultimately, if you look across the years, what we've done is create national resources that are designed to inform and empower parents and support the relationship between parents and professionals. A key thing is that we are embracing these interventions and since 2014, digital technology, not instead of anything, but rather to augment and amplify really powerful stuff that's going on in the ground, whether that's statutory services or services um, provided by other charities. And, uh, Digital has been our public way of doing things since 2014. Before then, it was all DVDs, but the film contents moved across. So this is another, I guess, key principle. It's not just the technology, it's the content within it that needs that co-creation. The reason why the films that were made back in 2008 and 2012 are having traction in Baby Buddy now is because of all the input from parents and professionals and professional bodies and royal colleges to shape those films. And interestingly, only last year, an academic paper was published, which um, found that Baby Buddy, as an intervention, um, Baby Buddy users um, were statistically significantly more likely to be breastfeeding at different points in time, even when they corrected from, for confounders. Um, so this journey that we've been on takes us to this summer where Baby Buddy will be launching as Baby Buddy 2.0. For those of you out there with ideas but not yet the funding, I would say don't give up. It took us years to get the funding for Baby Buddy 1 that we launched in 2014. And one of the key things about the app that we're launching this summer is it's got daily content for fathers. And we first wrote our first funding proposal about that back in 2012. So life is a journey. And as long as we learn along the way, then we can achieve great things together. This little image is actually um, from when we launched all of the mental health films within Baby Buddy. There's over 75 of them and uh, they were launched as part of Heads Together. And it explains this idea of our commitment to create national interventions endorsed by all the relevant rural colleges and professional bodies, but that then they are used and designed to be deployed or embedded locally and that data can help the flow to inform iterations and developments. 
Now I have to say, there's a proper step change when you move from DVDs to digital, because we, there is so much data and actually as much thought's gone into the back end functionality and the analytic system of maybe by even the front end, we can garner so much insight to help shape things. And one of the big step changes between the old version and the soon to launch version of Baby Buddy is that we can create specific content and unleash specific functionality for a region or a locality. So everyone in the UK, wherever you are, will have the new app for free and advert free. And as you'll, I'll share with you with Surrey as an example, it's been designed to feel very local. Um, so I've actually told you quite a lot about Baby Buddy before I formally told you, so forgive me, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, in a nutshell, Baby Buddy is an app that supports you with daily information on every step of your pregnancy and early years journey. There's a nugget of knowledge every day, like a drip, drip, drip effect. And that content and the 300 films that come along with it were all developed with input from a huge number of frontline professionals and parents and sign off from our editorial board. And I'll, I'll share with you who, who those organizations are shortly. Now, it looks like just a little app, but there's so much more to it. Um, someone in my team referred to it as a TARDIS, and I love the metaphor. I don't know, maybe you're not as big Doctor Who fans as I am, but you know, the police box looks pretty small on the outside, but you open it up and there's a world in there. And there's a world in two ways, in terms of the volume of content and the amount of functionality, but also a world in terms of the thinking behind it and the theoretical underpinning of it. And, and in this talk, I'm just going to really focus on proportionate universalism in the nurturing care framework, but just wanted you to be aware that, that, that the um, behaviour sciences underpinning our work and the combi wheel has been instrumental to our thinking as we've developed this, this new version. And actually, there's a recent paper published um, about how uh, the breastfeeding side of the app um, maps beautifully onto the capability, opportunity, motivation, the com be behavior change wheel. So uh, I, the, the, the one theoretical underpinning I just need to spend a couple of more moments on is proportionate universalism. Now, some of you will be public health people. Many of you um, listening to this won't be. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it's a brilliant approach. Uh, it was coined by Professor, Professor Sir Michael Marmot, Professor Sir Michael Marmot, who is an inspirational um, academic and change agent and the core idea is if we can reduce the steepness of the inequality gradient that exists out there we're not going to crack it by targeted interventions at particular communities or groups nor are we going to crack it just by doing universal stuff without having a mind on or a purposeful approach to reducing inequalities but if we can create interventions that are for everybody that have been designed specifically to be most relevant, most engaging, most sticky, using marketing terms, to the families who experience the worst inequalities, then we've got something. That's a potent formula. And that's what we've done with Baby Buddy. Um, and um, there's been lots of brilliant individuals and organizations who've been with us on the journey. And we're really proud that Baby Buddy is formally on the NHS App Store and endorsed by all of these organizations. And we thank the representatives who re review every film, every bit of new daily information. And my goodness, they've been busy as we create the father's content pathway and take baby buddy from six months to a year for this version launching summer 2021. Um, I mentioned the awards only because that's about usability and, and parent experience and how it's been used to support service delivery. Um, and uh, the reason we've had the success unequivocally is because of hundreds and now with digital feedback kind of in app feedback and beyond thousands of parents who've helped us shape it and also huge numbers of frontline professionals across the country who have given their feedback and helped us shape it so baby buddy is an intervention that supports frontline professionals in the work they do with families um, so what else do i need to tell you about baby buddy as it exists. It's there to inform and empower parents, uh, to support the relationship between parents and professionals, to support relationships between parents, um, 
and also it's about helping parents look after themselves and maximise their baby's potential. I encourage you to become a beta tester and dive in and look at the 300 plus films. Um, what I wanted to kind of acknowledge is they come in sets based on where they've come from and each set has had co-creation underpinning it. So for example, there's a whole series of films that we made in collaboration with the, current, the charity SANS designed to reduce stillbirth, neonatal death and maternal death. And those were launched some years ago by Jeremy Hunt. We've got another series of films about strengthening the couple relationship. And those were developed in collaboration with the charity One Plus One. Um, and there's many films um, that we've made ourselves featuring phenomenal parents who have opened up their lives to us to help other parents and awesome experts. So families using Baby Buddy get the opportunity to hear a leading light chatting in the most low key way as if they're almost in your living room. And the co-creation principles and I'm, I'm, the slides I can share afterwards, but I just want to touch upon them. There's a key bit about taking this approach with parents and professionals to ensure that what we create delivers to the evidence and best practice where there isn't evidence, that it delivers to the needs of families and that it's accessible. There's a huge piece around tone. Uh, it's being alongside, we put so much work into this tone of the baby buddy. She gives you information every day. And with the new version, it's a she or a he or a they. You get to choose uh, the, the gender or it's, it's a whole new version is being designed whether for whatever type of parent you are and your family situation. So, and we've done a lot of work with some um, awesome uh, families from the LGBTQ plus fam, um, communities and experts in this field. So the idea is whoever you are, Baby Buddy's there to support you on your journey. Uh, tonally, it might feel like your friend, but you can be assured that the content is accurate. And it's been designed specifically to support the delivery of, actually, I can't believe it's not there amongst all the other ones on the bottom bullet point, Better Births, uh, um, the NHS long-term plan, and the um, Healthy Child Programme and, 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 and the other kind of key policy drivers, as well as that nurturing care framework that I mentioned. Um, and it's this beautiful dance between insights and understanding that comes from parents, which comes in many forms, including our parent panel, um, and insights and understanding that comes from frontline professionals to understand how this app can support them in the vital work that they do. And with the pandemic, the need for more support for frontline professionals has just been highlighted. Um, everyone is working so hard and so stretched, and this is a resource to support busy frontline professionals. And equally, from the perspective of the families, we know that the pandemic is exacerbating underlying inequalities um, and how professionals um, are stretched more than ever. And this is a resource to support professionals um, and give them something to give a gift uh, to families in between appointments or to support the contact points and to enrich the service they give and also to directly inform and empower parents who sadly are having less contact points at the moment. Um, and if I look to um, the data, uh, to date, since Baby Buddy was launched, we've had um, over uh, 30,000 parents use it. Um, and despite the fact that it is really currently aimed at mothers, just because we haven't yet secured the funding for the fathers and the other co-parent route through the app, uh, despite that, uh, more than 20,000 fathers and other non-birthing parents have um, used Baby Buddy. And uh, also more than 11,000 frontline professionals. And that's really powerful because you can't really recommend something that you've not yourself played with, or you can recommend it, but it won't have traction. Personally, I would never watch a film that a friend's recommended that they've heard secondhand is good. I'd only watch a film if my friend tells me they've watched it and they love it. And it's the same with digital interventions. So um, to the proportionate universalism piece, baby buddy is used by families of all ages. And there is a uh, over-representation of families of parents who are um, under 25 
and a significant overrepresentation of, of teenage mums. Um, that's not to say this is an intervention only for young parents, as you'll see, parents of all ages are using it, and the feedback from all parents is incredibly strong, as, as I'll share with you in due course. Equally, looking at life through the inequality lens, as we um, always do, um, the ages of acquired field, mentioning your first language is a pop-up question that you don't have to answer, um, but of those that do answer the question, there is a comparing baby buddy users to other languages. It's been a long day, forgive me. Uh, and it's a hot day, that's why the fan is going. Um, if you compare, why don't we take Polish as an example? 1.03% uh, of the population has Polish as their first language, and 1.8% of baby buddy users have Polish as their first language. The biggest shift in terms of overrepresentation is Romanian. Um, but for many community languages, there are not less people using it because English isn't their first language, but actually more. Um, and that's uh, because of the co-creation with families from those communities that created Baby Buddy, because it's reading age nine, because of the bite-sized bits of information and the use of film. Uh, the next slide looks at things at a national level and looks at um, different localities and looking at the percentage of uh, baby, uh, parents in a given locality using baby buddy. So these are new registered users in, for example, Darlington in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, looking at the, the birth cohort for Darlington and then the number of new registered users, uh, each as a quarter of the annual cohort. And what you can see is more than 40% of parents in Darlington are using baby buddy. Now it's not that across the country, this is where embedding comes in. And um, as I'll explain in a little bit, uh, sorry, you're yeah, aiming to top the leaderboard and move all of these um, off and hit over 70 or 80% of parents using baby buddy. And, and nationally, it's less than 10%, a little under 10% of families use baby buddy. The difference is when we work within uh, a locality, working with parents and professionals to co-create, again, this word, co-create a plan that delivers to the local need and the local priority. That's when you have more healthcare professionals using it, more uh, baby buddy champions who are professionals and baby buddy champions who are parents. And then they're recommending it uh, with veracity. They're recommending it with confidence. And that's where the number of users go up and up. And we see it go up like this once we've done an embedding program in an area. Back to looking at life through the inequalities lens. Um, what we see is families of all backgrounds use it and that there is this overrepresentation of um, different communities and groups. Um, and uh, if you look, for example, at um, the, the, the needs for not in employment, education and training, we're just looking at um, everybody who's under 25 and under 25 weeks pregnant because obviously many people are in a caregiving situation if they've already had babies. So we're looking at people who are, who are um, in the first, uh, aren't yet in their uh, third trimester. Um, another key thing to note, and I hope anyone out there developing apps is, is doing the same, and we would love to share and benchmark because this is the data that people often do share, and that is about level of usage. So as an experiment, I mean, we're always looking at usage levels, but we looked at the 104 days of um, the first lockdown. And this actually features in a report that anyone in the early years or maternity space might want to dig out if you haven't already. And it's called Babies in Lockdown. And the email, the URL is babiesinlockdown.info. It's a collaborative report that Best Beginnings wrote with Homestart UK and the Parent UK Foundation. And it, it includes insights from uh, over 5,700 parents. Well, in there, you'll find more around what I'm sharing with you here, which is that uh, during that period, across the country, more than half of parents were using the app on average more than once a day. And the level of usage was even higher amongst mothers from Black, Asian, and minority ethnic communities. Um, and those, I mean, obviously, they're overlapping data sets, those for whom English isn't their first language. Um, and uh, I'm, 
lots of data I'm sharing with you. I'll make light work of this and then move on. Um, we have uh, in-app data that parents can choose to complete, but it's not uh, a required um, field. So obviously it might be people who are enjoying it will complete it. So we're aware of that, um, but still really consistent uh, feedback in terms of how parents are finding it's helping them directly, helping their mental health, helping them feel closer to their baby, and really importantly, helping them get more out of their appointments. When the NHS long-term plan was um, published, we uh, obviously, like many organisations and working with RCPPH, we work to influence it, but there's so much in there that if you haven't read it or haven't read it lately, go back to this bit around self, uh, help giving people agency, helping people be agents for their own health and well-being, lots around digital and lots around inequalities in this. Um, there is uh, so much data to share, but uh, given lots of numbers, so I thought I would counterbalance that with just a few quotes. Um, the um, insights that we've had are many, and uh, I'm about to share with you links to some academic evaluations, but I want to give you a sense of feedback from families. And actually, uh, there's just so much of it in terms of helping parents who were cut off from their normal support system during the height of the pandemic. Um, on the academic evaluation side, there's been many over the years. Uh, those of you that like your QR codes, you can take a photo of it here, of that QR code. And this takes you to our annual report. And in the annual report, there's five papers that were published last year. Um, and on our website, there are even more. Uh, papers showing how baby buddy is supporting uh, a statistically significant increase in something called PAM, the patient activation measure, work we did in Norfolk. And some of these evaluations really highlight things that we can do better that's informed what we're doing now. But um, really powerful insights, including the, the breastfeeding paper I mentioned earlier. And um, because of the potential that's been gathering the data from principle of proof of concept to evidence of impact that's been going on uh, over the last several years. We knew that we wanted to extend baby buddies to birth, we knew we were onto something. And as a charity committed to working collaboratively, we reached out and we formed this early years digital partnership. And we are working together to shift things to create powerful content to the fifth birthday using baby buddy as the vehicle to ensure that families of all backgrounds get access to this. It's about working together to democratize access to evidence-based information. Um, there are many partners in the early years of the partnership and it's growing. And if you happen to be watching this and involved in a charity that works in the early years space and you're not part of the partnership, definitely be in touch because we're growing and we're actively seeking funding to create content to the fifth birthday. We haven't got that funding yet, but we did get funding to create a father's content pathway last year. And we've been working with the Fatherhood Institute, Future Men, and lots of other organizations to create the father's content. And back to this uh, overview slide, Baby Buddy 2.0 is building on the same theoretical underpinnings as Baby Buddy 1.0 and being informed by all the insights we've gathered since 2014. We got the funding from the National Lottery Community Fund and from the Fidelity Foundation. And we're so grateful to them because without their support, we wouldn't be able to offer what we are now offering, which is a new version launching very, very soon. We have different groups of people who have been instrumental in shaping Baby Buddy and who are now really busy beta testing it. And we invite you all to be part of that growing family. Um, and want to pay special thanks to the Royal Colleges and professional bodies, everyone on the parent panel, all the frontline professionals involved and all the awesome charities and community groups who are instrumental in, in, in developing what we're about to launch. Now, the new app is a proof of step change. It is an evolution of Baby Buddy 1.0 in that it's daily information, all the same daily information for mums and the films are coming across, but it's also a revolution in terms of some of these step changes from a functionality perspective. 
I also think it's a revolution in terms of for the first time ever, we believe anywhere in the world, and that's providing daily information for fathers and other non-birthing parents that mentions you by name, that mentions your partner by name, that gives you different content if you're not with the partner, different content if you're breastfeeding or not. And one of the things that people are People are very excited about different access, aspects of this thing to launch app, um, including the fact that it is going to be a personal child health record um, and that we are on a route for it to be interoperable with the NHS fine. We're working very closely with NHS X and NHS Digital on it. Um, people in the maternity space uh, are very excited about um, some of the new features uh, that support personalization. Um, and the equity strategy in terms of the maternity transformation program. And pretty much everyone's delighted that unlike the first version, you can actually be pregnant and have a child or more children. In the old version, you could only have one child at a time. It's just isn't how the world works. Um, and finally, but I'll pick that up more when I talk about Surrey, the idea that we can create different content and functionality for different parts of the country or for national organizations that work with particular groups, we can unlock with special codes, additional content and functionality. This slide talks of the direction of travel. We had, uh, we're ready and the NHS, NHS X and NHS Digital isn't quite ready, but they will be, I believe by March of next year for the linking up. So we're one of a handful of suppliers um, that are uh, on track to formally be a, a personal digital child health record, whereby a parent who puts the app anybody into connect mode will be able to surface their child's records that are held on the NHS within baby buddy. Now, to be clear, nothing parents put in the app goes up to the NHS sign. The information will be flowing down so that wherever you are, rather than having to, to carry your paper uh, um, child health record around, some people call it the, the, um, the red book, um, you will, wherever you are, have digital access to that. So we're on the homeward straight, um, and that is uh, building on everything that we've done. And in this section, I'm gonna give you a sneaky preview of the new version through the lens of the work that we're doing with, sorry, Heartland Integrated Care System. So um, I need to let you know where they are now. And if I come back and speak a year hence, I'd be really excited to be able to show you the sort of the, the before and after, like Blue Peter moment. So on the left is the data I shared with you before. It's visualized differently, but it's the same data. I'm looking at the first quarter of this year. This is where Surrey currently is. So it's not an area where baby buddies used very much. As a whole area, it's less than um, the country average, although Epsom and Ewell have got um, are nearly 15% of the birth cohort are using it. But they've seen Baby Buddy, they've done a huge amount of research, a huge consultation, and they've identified Baby Buddy as an intervention that can augment and amplify everything that they're doing in terms of first 1,001 days and in terms of maternity transformation. And we have been working with them. They've commissioned us to do a really exciting two-year project which starts with a discovery phase, which is now coming to an end, and then is about on the cusp of going into the delivery phase. So here, I map what's going on nationally to what's going on in, in Surrey. So we are um, in beta testing mode, and I should really, where it says July, off to the right at the top, I should um, really say, I'll put my little mouse there so you can see, um, that should say summer, just play safe because the joys of digital and, and uh, but this summer we'll be launching the new version. In advance of that, uh, people across Surrey are getting to play with the app. And importantly, we've been running uh, three roundtables. The last one was very recently. And in parallel to those roundtables, uh, we've commissioned an independent researcher to do a lot of insight work with parents of all backgrounds and multidisciplinary professionals to understand the information and advice gaps that are there for families and to think about how baby buddy could support 
And finally, to think about if this app will support, and that's the message coming through loud and clear from all the research, how do we make this app business as usual across, sorry, how do we support busy frontline professionals to be informed and empowered to use this powerful resource in their contact points with the family they support? And we are uh, coming to the report writing stage, and the roundtables have been fabulous energizing and informative, and we have been iterating our plan. The plan for the embedding has emerged from these roundtables and the other research. And in a nutshell, it's a plan that will support Baby Buddy supporting the whole system change around nurturing care. It's not just about directly empowering parents, it's supporting other charities, for example, Homestart and Twins Trust and other charities have attended those workshops. It's about a tool for frontline professionals, and it's also ensuring data collective is informing policy. The version of Baby Buddy that's out there, the green version, the, the old version, um, does all of that, but the new version just does it to the next level, this sort of step change. Uh, and one of the key differences is that data can be collected for a locality, not to go to us, but to go to the, the commissioners to support that quality improvement cycle. So um, we are in a really exciting stage. Uh, if you hadn't noticed, I'm rather excited about it. So uh, super sneak preview and very quick. I want you to all sign up to actually test the app and then you get to really play with it and explore it. But to give you an idea of the sort of conversations we were having during the round tables with Surrey is thinking about how and when parents might be introduced to it to make sure professionals understood really important things like when you log in through the NHS, nothing, no information goes to the NHS, it's just using your login. Um, really a chance to make sure professionals are thinking and parents about what the app offers and how it could be um, used most effectively. Lots of thinking about the different features and functionality and how and when on that maternity early years journey, either particular features or particular content could be used in a really potent way to, with families. Um, lots of thoughts around the power of that digital best friend that takes you on the journey with that clear voice. Um, quite a deep dive around the content section. We've had quite a lot of thinking around for Surrey, what would the specific push notifications be? that could be pushed out. And then also in this feature, Baby Buddy suggests, in addition to all the suggests that happen nationally, what would be particularly useful or relevant to push to families um, that are in that zone? Um, also, some conversations around, in addition to the national content, what extra content, we could have a separate category with particular films or articles for Surrey parents. Um, and also quite a lot of time on this feature called Faces, which allows uh, a, a mum and a dad, or a mum and a mum, or a dad and a dad to share articles, videos, lists, um, and also how that could be used for um, the parenting groups that they run in Surrey to create a little cohort of parents using the space together and how it can be used really one-to-one -one between, uh, for example, supporting the delivery of continuity of care, enriching that relationship, uh, socially prescribing specific films, like film smoking cessation or healthy eating or maternal mental health or some uh, thing that that professional knows that parent would benefit from, they can share it with that parent through the app. Um, I'm cracking through a lot because, uh, but we're, we're, we are nearly at the end. I just need to flag this um, feature that allows parents to choose their place of birth. It's pivoted around the hospital, but then within a hospital, you look at the different services, home birth, alongside maternity unit, standalone or um, obstetric led, and how it gives you easy access to information to inform your choice. So there's a lot around personalization and choice within this new version, including uh, the different plans that were developed in collaboration 
with Bart and HS Plus, we have a physical hard copy version of these four different plans that you see on the left. And we've um, tweaked them with parents and uh, Bart uh, professionals and also the, the national maternity team. Um, and uh, just to kind of reiterate, this is an app that allows parents to have multiple children uh, and even have twins or triplets, uh, although the content currently is assuming that you have singletons, just uh, apart from signposting, for example, twins. Um, so it's been a bit of a, uh, an incredibly exciting and intense period in parallel to a devastating pandemic. The Babies in Lockdown report highlighted the increased needs of families, the increased isolation, but what's been energizing for the Best Beginnings team and everyone we're working with is that we're creating something here that will really help families 24 seven, including access to the 24 seven baby buddy crisis text messenger, which is a quality assured, clinically assured, uh, 24 seven confidential service that we link to within the app. Um, and I'm going to whiz through, uh, this is about the feedback functionality and the idea that we create a particular version for a particular locality. And uh, in the next two minutes before we close, um, it's my chance to invite you to get involved. Um, life is a journey. Uh, it's, uh, what do they say? You can get there quickly or you, alone, I get it right. You can get there quickly alone or you can get there further together. And that's why I invite you to be involved. Uh, to spread the word, to um, complete this form. And if you complete this form, you'll have the opportunity through it to sign up to BTF, uh, to connect with, with me um, and some of my senior colleagues. If you're, for example, a commissioner and you're interested in taking, uh, exploring what it would mean to bring baby buddy to your integrated care system or to your locality, wherever you are in the UK, this is a UK wide intervention. Um, so for those of you who, um, I haven't got the live chat going, forgive me, so just type in that URL, or again, for those tech savvy ones amongst you, just green grab um, with your camera, the QR code, and that will take you straight to the form. Um, so that the journey with you and Best Beginnings and you and Baby Buddy starts today. The journey's been a long one, and my goodness, we've got a long way to go. Um, but together, I really firmly believe, I've been saying this in all my talks for over all the years, um, and I'm as passionate about it as ever, together we can make a difference for future generations. So thank you for your time, and thank you for being part of this event, and feel free to share the talk with your colleagues near and wide. Looking forward, I hope, to getting your form and involving you in this really exciting journey. And a final thought because many of you watching will not be in the maternity or early years space. I hope the principles that I shared with you of co-creation, not just with the beneficiaries of your intervention, but also for the frontline professionals. This idea that it's not just about the resource where you need the co-creation, but the work also that needs to go into thinking about how that intervention is gonna be embedded. So it becomes business as usual business as usual within your patch. I believe these core principles are there and useful, however you're using digital. And I encourage you to be in touch and share your insights with me and the Best Beginning team, because we're all on a learning journey together. Thank you for your time and thanks for being part of this. Many thanks.